Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the channel. My name is Toxic Spill and today we're going to be doing something a little bit more interesting. Now in the comment section as of recent days, I've been getting a lot of support, particularly about my co-op videos, both the ranking and the co-op guides for every commander on how people have been learning a lot and really getting into the game, which honestly I cannot describe how happy that makes me feel as I've had this happen to me before and now I have that effect on other people and you can't replicate this feeling at all. Now looking back on all my videos, I've always made videos designed for people who already know what to do, but not for people who are just new to the game. So I thought that today I would make this video for anyone who's getting into StarCraft 2 or maybe revisiting it after a long time and are interested in the co-op mode, this is the video for you. Now before we get into the ranking, there are two things I need to make clear. If you're interested in knowing more, not only about the five commanders that I recommend in this video, but the other 13 as well, if you scroll down below, there is a link in the description where I have made a playlist of every single playable commander and explore them in depth, talking about their units, their abilities, their upgrades, their perks, their prestige, their strategy, everything about them is covered in those videos. Out of all 18 commanders, the first three are completely free, but the other 15 of them are free and a half if that makes any sense. See, you can play every single commander in the game for free, but every single commander past the first three commanders, you can only level up to level five. And normally I'd get angry with it, but again, the game is free to play and I am not sponsored to say that at all. I wish I was, cause I'm getting into some whew, expensive hobbies. Now, if you find yourself returning often to the channel, or if you love the video, you love the content, hell, if you love me, be sure to scroll down below and hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all the content coming your way. Hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm because the algorithm would love it and so would I. Now, let's start ranking some commanders, shall we? Starting out with the first commander on the list that will surprise exactly no one. And that of course is James Raynor. Very soon. It ain't over till it's over, you son of a bitch. Now I know all of the experienced players have just cringed by the words that I have said, but I'm sorry, Raynor is one of the best commanders by far for any new players. Not only are Terrans known for their very primitive, judged by races who are technically advanced in their technology as sort of a cheat, but whatever, and it's very reminiscent to literally any other RTS game. Barracks produces infantry, factory produces vehicles, very basic to understand. See, every co-op commander has one unique mechanic that is very major, and these mechanics can never really be permanently changed. They can be slightly altered, but never majorly changed. The funny thing is though, is that Raynor doesn't exactly have one of these, which makes that his unique trait. Raynor's uniqueness comes from his troop variety. His ease of use is literally being versatile as hell. Raynor has a solid troop choice for literally any situation mainly in infantry. You wanna make these huge blobs of bodies that are literally able to fill the enemy with gunfire? Marines for straight damage. Armor targets, marauders, boom. Figuratively and quite literally. Swarms, fire bats, keeping people alive, medics. Very easy to understand and very powerful when all combined together to take on a whole variety of threats that you will definitely be taking on in the game. Just keep in mind of AOE, cause it can be <laughs> very devastating. Uh, Huh, I speak from experience. And it doesn't just end there. Defensive maps, offensive maps, he has something for everything. Do you wanna defend a location with bunkers and shove all those infantry aside and have siege tanks, which these tanks quite literally spread their legs and turn into a goddamn artillery cannon. Raynor is arguably one of the most versatile commanders, but definitely one of the easiest commanders to play because his entire ability is to just be good at quite literally everything, making him our first on the list. Taking up spot number two and a commander that is definitely gonna be a little bit more complex than the previous, however still strong and very basic, is Artenis, leader of the Protoss, and I guess a sub-faction of them, there's, there's, learn the lore. The Protoss themselves are actually quite difficult to use compared to, of course, Terrans, but not as bad as Zerk. Keep in mind, you will be paying for something called, I, well, at least what I call, the Protoss Premium, where you spend extra resource on every single unit cuz why no clue 
but you're gonna be paying more regardless. Artanis is much more similar to Raynor, however, leaving behind a little bit of that troop variety for rapid deployment. See, every Protoss commander can turn their gateway, the that produces infantry, into a charge-based deployment. These troops can be deployed in power fields, which lucky enough, Artanis has a free ability for that, which is kind of broken because allies can use it too. Not only making it an instant warp in, and not only applying three charges per building and giving that mechanic to quite literally every single one of his troop producing buildings in his entire arsenal, which is just, huh, good fucking lord. This makes reinforcing your army very, very easy, which coming from the perspective of a new player is definitely very, very good because you will be uh, losing a lot of troops initially until you learn the game. And even then, the mechanic just adds on to how powerful he is. His troop variety is very strong with stuff like Dragoons, Mortals, and Tempests, which I'm, I'm gonna be honest, at the time of recording this video, I did not have unlocked, but keep in mind, very, very powerful unit, very expensive. This makes him an absolute strong choice, having a lot of the positive points of Raynor while having a mechanic that is going to be very helpful for any new player. This, of course, gives Artenis the second spot. Taking the number three category is a commander that you might not suspect. See, we're covering the faction of the Zerg, and if you're not aware of what they are, they are a biological, hive-minded species that just wants to kill, eat, and grow. If you're familiar to Warhammer 40k, which a lot of people in my community actually are, surprisingly and thankfully, is the Tyranids. Almost the same thing. Now, you might be thinking, why wouldn't I put down Kerrigan? She's the last hero of these three that would be in the completely free category, but I have already made a video talking about how much of a bitch she is to get to up to power. Lo and behold, uh, she's, she's definitely got her issues. No, 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 no. We gotta talk about Zagara. Zagara is one of the best commanders to play, at least from a fun perspective. Strategic? Eh, a little bit shoddy on that side. See, I wouldn't exactly call the Zerg easy to play, but if you want to learn how to play the Zerg, they work as in the main base is a hatchery. Hatchery automatically produces lava, and these little buggers evolve into every single troop type as long as you have the building to do so. In stark contrast to other commanders on this list, Zagara is great for beginners for her lack of unit variety rather than her immense unit variety which makes her super easy to use. She mainly specializes in a swarm of expendable cheap units called Swarmlings that quite literally live up to their name in a very alarming sense. And in most cases, her suicidal units in her charge called Banelings, which are giant rolling sacks of viscous acid. And they sound just as terrifying as they are. Now Zagora takes to the battlefield herself, which I respect immensely. And while she doesn't do a lot of damage, her abilities do all of the work. Mainly, her Infested Frenzy. The funniest ability by far, which jacks up all units on the battlefield, including her ally, with huge amounts of movement speed and huge amounts of attack speed. Acting like a cloud of purple mist that just washes over the enemy objective. Troops and defenses quite easily get deleted from existence, and your troops too, because they're expendable as well, but don't worry, she's got the economy to just build up more. But as I say, with expendable troops comes inevitable replacements. Zagara, overall very powerful commander, super easy to use, very basic, very damage orientated through large numbers. Taking number four is a commander that I will honestly never hear the end of it from my comment section, at least for this one. And that, of course, is Tychus Finley. He's one of the better commanders to play in the game, and as a new player, also very good in this category. However, his fundamentals are quite odd, as Tychus doesn't exactly work like other commanders. There's that, there's also the army problem. See, Tychus doesn't actually have an army of sorts like at all. Tychus gets his combat power from his outlaws, hero units that can be chosen per level and are individually super powerful and built for certain purposes. Dealing with hard-hitting units? There's an outlaw for that. Dealing with swarms units? There's an outlaw for that. Take outlaws taking a lot of damage? There's an outlaw for that. There is something for everyone making it very customizable and very reactionary. I still remember the days when I first played Tychus. I was still relatively new to the game and he was one of my first commanders that I purchased. He truly proves that size doesn't mean anything because you can easily play with a smaller army and a smaller base. Much easier to use, but definitely just as powerful as any other, if not more powerful. 
And if you're curious, each one has their own upgrades and abilities, and I've already made a video on that in the entire co-op guide. But being super mobile, super strong, small bases, small army, and definitely one of the weirder playstyles to have, but recommended nonetheless, securing him in position four. I'm gonna be honest, Tychus is probably one of the oddball commanders, but good lord is he powerful. And when I was making this video, deciding the final slot was very difficult. There's a lot of commanders that are relatively easy to use, so I thought about this one, and I definitely most likely will get flack from it for the comments. I'm talking about Emperor Minsk. Now, not only is he one of the best commanders in the game by far, and you can fight me on that, but he is a true asshole of a human being. He leads the Terran Dominion and has access to all of its resources, mostly through, uh, heh. <laughs> Questionable means. We got a runner. They're shooting civilians. Move in. His infantry are not just numerous in number, but super flimsy and very reactionary. They can switch between builders and conscripts on the fly while being able to have a multitude of weapons. And yes, 160 minerals per guy is quite expensive, and it is. But the gun always stays in circulation, and it can always be picked up from the ground. The gun always stays in the game, but the user always seems to switch for some anonymous reason. These elite units are there when it comes to the variety. From the Aegis Guard, who are super tank, to the Pride of August Guard, who is super mobile, and my favorite by far, the Black Hammer. It, it's it's crap unit, but it's I mean look at this guy. He's so cool. He walks around Super expensive, but he deploys into the ground and becomes this giant missile spewing anti-air gun That can basically shut down almost any air both in large numbers short numbers strong units or weak units He is able to kill quite literally everything his abilities are also crazy powerful too. However, they do have very, very huge limitations on them, both early and late game, which are quite literally contrast to one another. It's weird. Don't get me wrong, it's weird. Now, while Minx requires a little bit more finesse and troop variety compared to Raynor, having a fastest economy building in the game and building up your bases way earlier than you should is undeniably great for new players, as you're able to then spend all of those money on units to then absolutely dominate the battlefield way earlier. This of course makes him one of the better commanders to play from a new player's perspective, but I unfortunately wasn't able to have that experience since uh, he was released relatively recently, or at least StarCraft II development time recently. One of the most powerful commander, easy to use, super powerful, huge variety. What is there not to like about this guy? And that is about it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are my top five commanders that I, Toxic Spill, by far not a professional, but definitely am very experienced in the trial and error section. Now, by all means, StarCraft II is not a pick up and play game. In any case, these commanders are the best. If you're getting into the game, you really want to try it out, I highly recommend all these commanders. Once again, game is free. Every single commander you can play for free, however you want to lock all their capabilities. Three of the five commanders that I've mentioned, you do have to pay a little bit for, which isn't too bad. Rainer and his flexibility, Artenis and his reinforcements, Zagara and her idea to challenge how many bodies can I throw at the enemy before they run out of bullets, Tychus proves that size is in everything, and finally Minsk where overkill is just never enough. Now, if you've made it to the end of the video, I truly cannot thank you enough. If you're a new player or an experienced player and you have any questions, not only can I answer them in the comment section below, but if you want more one-on-one -on -one experience, there's a link below in the description to my Discord server filled with very passionate people who play this game and would gladly help you, or if you just want to find someone to play with, they are able to answer those needs as well. Once again, I thank you all for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel as it would really help me out. With all that being said, this is Hawkix Bill. I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day and do what you love. Take care.